So you want to know how to get all nines in physics, chemistry, biology, all in one month only. Well, lucky for you, I've spent the last four or five years of my life throughout my GCSE and then A-level, and then even now in uni, optimizing for STEM subjects, just because most of the subjects that I did were STEM subjects. It's gone to the point where I've sort of created my own formula, a step-by-step -step process that never fails me, and I'll share it with you today. That being said, if you only have a month, can you still do it? Well, it's going to require some changes in the technique, but trust me, with the right effort channeled into the right things, you can 100% get all nines in the GCSE. GCSE sciences in just a month. But also, this isn't some sort of magic pill. I can only give you the blueprint, but it's upon you to actually take that blueprint and follow the instructions. Firstly though, you might be feeling stressed. You might get thoughts like, oh, I know I should have started earlier. All of my friends have already finished all of their flashcards and I haven't even started yet, and so on. Listen, I'm not gonna sugarcoat it and say you're in the right or anything, but it's still salvageable. Obviously, it's not ideal, and in a way, you should kind of feel stressed out about it. That's just your brain telling you that you've made a mistake by delaying studying and procrastinating, but just use it as a learning experience for next time. You're probably still only near a so you could use this as motivation to start earlier in year 12 and then year 13 and so on. And so how do you actually get all nines in the sciences in just a month? Well first let me tell you about my science spectrum theory which states that every single science subject at GCSE falls somewhere within a spectrum. You've probably heard me say this before, the spectrum has memorization on one side and then problem solving on the other. Physics is closer to the problem solving side, biology is closer to the memorization side, and then chemistry is just somewhere in the middle. Now this is a very important concept because it's going to give you an idea of what you need to emphasize while studying for each subject that you study for. For example, for biology, you might emphasize flashcards a bit more. And then for physics, you might emphasize doing practice questions a bit more. And now let me tell you about the 80-20 rule. Since we're short on time, we need to use Pareto's principle to guide us in knowing what exactly to do. But before that, I speak a lot about efficient studying and how there isn't that much time and every minute counts. For that reason, I decided to partner up with SA Pro. Let's say for whatever academic or personal reason, you need to have an essay written, but you don't have the time to draft and then redraft and then redraft again a whole essay. All you need to do is just go on SA Pro, choose from their professional writers based on their reviews and the ratings and their pricing, and then place an order. You tell the writer exactly what you need in the essay and then you get free unlimited revisions in case you don't like it until you're satisfied with the work or you get your money back. Not only that though, SA Pro comes with 100% plagiarism free content and even free complimentary turnitin.com reports. Now if you use the code SHIGS, then you get 20% off the already friendly student pricing. And if you're interested, then check the description for the links for their website or app. Thank you SA Pro, and now back to the video. The 80-20 rule states that 80% of the results will come from 20% of the action that you do. As in, if you get a 9 in any given subject, say biology, 80% of that result came from 20% of the things that you did while studying. Meaning that if we can find that 20% and then extrapolate it, make it 100%, then we can effectively boost our grade while at the same time eliminating all of the fluff in our studying technique. You know, the stuff that takes time but doesn't really boost our grades. Coloring in, highlighting, reading your notes, all of that stuff. I'm not really gonna waste your time. From my experience, that 20% is two things flashcards and practice questions. Now, if you've watched even a couple of my videos, you'd know about my trademark NFT method. It stands for notes, flashcards, and then test questions. It's the backbone of my studying technique. It's what always has gotten me in the top grades. But again, because we don't really have that much time, we're gonna have to change it up just a little bit. Firstly, we're gonna get rid of notes. Out of those three things, notes are the least important. Although making notes helps in learning and digesting the information, I'm about to give you another studying technique that will give you similar effects in much shorter time. But before that, it goes without saying that you need to structure your studying. I'm not going to waste my time and explain how. After watching this video, go watch this video that talks about how I structure my studying and it will be linked at the end of this video. Now here's what I'll do instead of notes. Let's say I'm about to study a chemistry chapter. First pull up a free science lessons video or any similar video, whatever you like, and then put it on either 1.5 or 2 times speed or anything between, whatever you can handle. Now instead of watching the video and then pausing and making notes or flashcards, what you're going to do is you're going to watch the video continuously with full attention without doing anything else. And then straight after finishing that video, you're going to find pre-made flashcards and test yourself on that topic that you just watched. Now this is advice I haven't really given out before because usually I would say make your own flashcards because there's a lot of benefit in it but I do understand that there's a lack of time and so we need to get the most bang for our buck when it comes to studying. Now once you're done with the deck of flashcards you're going to want to write exactly when you did it hopefully using the revision checklist that you're going to learn about in the video you're going to watch after this one and that's because over the next month you're going to want to repeat that deck of flashcards a couple more times just to really apply space repetition. Now I do hope that you're listening attentively and even writing down notes for what I'm saying because this is the amount of detail that I usually only charge for. You can find more of these tips as well as everything you need from eight to Z to get the top grades in my ultimate guide to acing your GCSEs. Just look at what these guys that took it have to say about it. You might be thinking that it's a bit too late, the GCSEs are, you know, at the horizon, but this is a program that you could take in a weekend and implement straight away. No matter if there's four months or three weeks left until the exam, I can guarantee you that you'll get benefit out of it. And the principles that I lay out in the program are applicable in A-levels as well. I use the same exact studying techniques in both GCSEs and A-levels to get the top grades. But let's say somehow you don't benefit. We offer a 30-day money-back guarantee no matter what. And so there's no risk whatsoever. 
you're interested, click the link in the description now. Now that we've gone through flashcards, the only thing left is just banging out test questions. Practice questions aren't really complicated. You just do them, right? Really, the only way we could change how we do them is when we do them. And if you're short on time, I believe that the best way to do practice questions is to do them right after you just learned the content. As in you finish a topic and then you do practice questions for that topic. You see, if you're short on time, I see a lot of benefit in doing practice questions as soon as you've learned the content to really accelerate the learning process. You learn the content with this correct application, so you don't have to go through the learning process again like you do if you separate learning the content and then doing test questions. If you follow the techniques that I laid out in this video, I have no doubt that you can easily get the top grades in GCSE Science even if you only have a month.